Hey, 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 happy day. Sharon Horn Elsom here, also known as Pajama Grandma, and she, S H E, Sharon. What's she up to now? Day 638. Talking about every day, documenting the journey from brick and mortar, corporate America, mm -hmm. offline businesses to the online world, the online world of all different things. Because we can do pretty much anything you want online that you used to do offline. You can do a lot of different things with the internet that we could never ever do before. Found myself a couple of years ago with the opportunity to actually explore the online world, something that I'd been curious about for a really long time. But I was so busy in my day-to-day -day life raising my family and building businesses, you know, brick and mortar real businesses, that I never really had time to add an online component to them. And so now I love finding ways to add an online component to like just about any business because I am of the mind these days that every business if it wants to exist in the you know, short and long term, it's gonna to have to have some kind of an online presence and online component. And I used to think that was websites, but I don't, I don't believe that anymore. And I don't believe it's 100% funnels either. I think it depends on your business, your goals, your objectives, what you're trying to achieve. I think some businesses just need a presence because they have to interact with the human beings in order to provide their goods and services. And other businesses, yep, you can just do 100% online with a funnel and the whole sales process can be automated. But there's a lot of sales processes and a lot of things that still need that human interaction person to person. Um, so although I believe every business needs an online component, I don't believe every business can go 100% online, which I disagree with this. many of my peers on that. And can you can create an entirely 100% online business? Absolutely, positively. Uh, but it's not the same thing as traditional business because you know what? People are always going to want to shop. People are always going, as much as Amazon and online shopping, and I'm an avid believer in those, I, I participate a lot. As much as those things are growing and will continue to grow, there is still going to be a need for we humans to interact with one another. Social media is fun and awesome, but it's not the same thing as having a real conversation with another human being. It's, it's just not the same. I know a lot of people are substituting it, but I, there's, there's good and bad about everything, but we can have a topic about that another day. So what did I call this one? I called it Flow flexible and open valve. I don't know if I've ever talked about the concept of open valve. It's uh, it's like being open-minded or receptive to things that you're not normally open-minded and receptive about. And after I had my son cardiac arrest, I read a book recommended to me by Jim Edwards by Lynn Grabhorn. And Lynn Grabhorn has since passed away, but she wrote an incredible book um, that I read and I did the workbook and I read it again. The workbook actually took me over six months to do because I told myself when I started it, and I think Lynn probably recommended this, I don't think it was my idea, that she said, go through the exercises and don't move on until you finish every exercise. And so I got into the book, I got about a month in, and I hid an exercise that probably wouldn't have blocked hardly anybody else, but it took me literally two months before I could make myself complete that exercise and do that exercise. And what I learned from that activity was how powerful that strategy is to learn something, apply it, learn a little more about something, apply it, learn a little bit more about something, and just do that until you reach the goal or the objective that you've set for yourself. Because that exercise, the one that I could have skipped over, that was the exercise that I personally needed the most. And when we're learning a new thing, when we're learning a new activity, when we're following someone else's model, when we're learning from other people, where we get hung up, where we get stuck is going to be a little bit different for each one of us. Now, when I'm doing a course or when I'm coaching somebody or I'm coaching, you know, certain types of business owners on something, they tend to get hung up and stuck at the same components or the same places or about the same places of the process, but everybody doesn't because we're all different. Um, a lot of people do, but everybody doesn't. And so we need to be flexible and flow and open to helping people over the little hurdles and challenges they have. Now, we know I love challenges, so it's kind of my thing is to, to see where, where do people get hung up and what do we need to click and what do we need to ask and what do we need to do to overcome that little hurdle, that little challenge. And again, it's fun and it's exciting because it's a little bit different for, for each of us. An open valve means that I am open to other possibilities, other things that I might not even have thought about before. I'm open to looking at people and circumstances and businesses and situations and things 
maybe differently than I have in the past and differently than I thought was possible. And we can do this with any, especially big emotionally charged subjects. It's important, at least for me from a personal development and personal growth standpoint, to say, okay, this is how I've grown up believing something should be. This is how I've seen it in the past. This is what I'm being shown. This is what I'm looking at and I'm saying, yeah, this doesn't feel right to me, but I'm open-minded enough to ask questions about it and try to understand it from other, the other side, the other person's perspective, another point of view. And I still might not agree with it, but at least I've opened up and I've given it, I've given it more consideration than I would if I just say, nope, this is the way it is. And I think I'm more open-minded and, and more open-valved because of the experiences that I personally have had. You know, when you have a, a death experience, you tend to be more open-minded, more flexible, and less judgmental about things. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still, uh, the queen has spoken. I'm still pretty stubborn about some things, and I have to consciously make myself be open-minded, be flexible, look for different perspectives, look for the other side. And again, I'm not necessarily gonna change my mind or agree with it, but I am gonna actually consider the other side of things, the other possibilities, the other, you know, put your, myself in someone else's shoes and say, okay, I still don't agree with you, but I understand where you're coming from, from with respect to this topic. Now, the biggest challenge for me personally is doing this with my ex-husband, putting myself in his shoes and understanding his perspective, his perception, where he's coming from. And again, a lot of times I still don't agree with him, but I understand his point of view better. And so it just makes everything go more smoothly in our interactions and in our communication, in our, um, in our, the projects that we're still involved in together. And this works with anybody and anything. It's always going to benefit you to be able to see things from a broader perspective. Again, you're not going to necessarily change your mind, but if I say, okay, I don't agree with this particular belief or thought or activity, but if I understand where the people that do believe it are coming from, it helps me to number one, better understand and interact with them and also to better serve my customers. This is really important when we're dealing with our customers and the people that we're here to serve. If we don't have a clue where they're coming from and where they're at right now and how to really serve them better, give them more value and solve their problems, how are we going to ever do that? We're not going to be able to do that. So open valve, flexibility and flow, those things are are to me very important and things that we should just periodically think about. I mean, we tend to get really set and regimented in our ways. And one of my most dreaded lines from corporate America was, well, that's the way we've always done it, or that's just the way it is. The ex-husband used to always say, that's just the way I am. And I'm like, okay, well, that's just the way you've always been, but it doesn't mean that's the way you need to choose to be in the future. But a lot of people believe that they are a fixed individual and they can never change their mind about anything. Me, I stay away from those people nowadays, but um, you're still going to run into them. You're still going to interact with them. They're still going to be, sometimes they're going to be your customer. Um, and so you're going to have to be a little bit more open-minded and try to understand from their point of view. So working on that today, just did day 31 of the BP challenge. And we were talking about a, how do you, a, a, just a, a project management strategy or yeah I guess it's a problem project management strategy called plan do check act I learned it in college and I still use it today not on every project but on a lot of um, smaller projects so for example this 90 day challenge I'm breaking it into segments like 10 day segments otherwise it would be overwhelming for people and me too right so we're repeating the same similar process about five times throughout the overall 90 day challenge and one way that you can do the different segments of the process is to apply the plan, do, check, act strategy. So for example, in this segment, I am doing movement, activity, physical exercise to help lower my blood pressure. And so I want to plan, do, check, act that particular segment. So I'm going to plan, well, what am I going to do as part of this segment? What am I going to do to move, get more exercise, get activity, physical activity in my life? Then I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to try a couple of different things. I'm going to do a couple of different things. I'm going to walk. I'm going to, I'm not going to run. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to run. I'm going to walk. I'm going to use different exercise equipment. I'm going to find different places that I like to, um, and different experiences and activities that I want to participate in. I'm in Texas right now in Fredericksburg, and there's something called the, I want to say magic rock. That's not it. 
but there's this great big giant rock that people climb. I want to climb that. If it ever stops raining, that's one of the things that I'm going to do during this segment. And now I'm going to check and I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to check and in with myself. I'm going to say, did that make me feel better? Is that moving me toward what I want? Is that lowering my blood pressure? I'm going to check my blood pressure. And I, for me, um, the check is either I did it or I didn't do it. Did I do something physical every day or did I not? That is my personal, that's going to be my measurement, my, my way of measuring. And either I did it or I didn't. Now, there's no excuse for me to not do it. Um, I will do it. I'm committing to myself. I, and part of what I wanted to explore today was why. Why is this segment important toward my overall goal? Because if I don't ask myself, yesterday we talked about thoughts, feelings, and beliefs about this, this segment, this thing about exercise, movement, action, physical activity, because that's mine. Or whatever, whoever, when you're going through the challenge, whatever your next thing is, ask yourself, what am I thinking about this? What are my beliefs about this? What are my feelings about this? Now today we want to explore why is this segment, why is doing this thing important to achieving our 90 day goal, my 90 day goal? Well, movement is one of the best things. Physical activity is one of the best things that I learned in my research the first couple of weeks of the challenge that helped to lower blood pressure. So of course that's something that I want to incorporate and add and make sure I'm doing in my life. So that's my why. And my biggest why is I don't want to take another prescription drug because I tend to be really susceptible to the side effects of different pharmaceutical products. That's me personally. Your why might be because you want to make more money so you can spend more time with your family. Whatever it is, tap into that why for each of the segments. Again, so we're going through the process at least six times because we're going through it for each of the five segments we're going to cover and we're going through it as part of the overall process. So by the time you finish the 90 day challenge, you have got this process so that it's just an automatic way of thinking. So today was all about the why. Why is this segment important toward me achieving my goal? Uh, what did we have? Nitty gritty was for supersize your business. So that was kind of fun. It's focusing on the most basic important components of a project or, or whatever you're doing. Maybe it's the most basic and important components when you're communicating with somebody. But nitty gritty, it's a, it's a fun expression. I've, I've said, hey, let's get down to the nitty gritty lots of times. <laughs> let's get down to what's important and let all the other stuff go. So that's it. It's going to be a fun day. I think more traveling, which will be fun too. I'm going to go to some place I've never been before, so I'm excited about that. I'm going to meet an amazing little human being that I've never met before, my great niece. So I'm super excited about that. And whatever else comes my way. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, go have an awesome fun day, just like I'm going to. Be flexible, flow, and open that valve. Be open-minded to looking at things from other people's perspective. And see how much more fun your day is. That's it. Catch you tomorrow.